Good Biblical Morning! Yeah! Welcome back, welcome back, or maybe welcome for the very first time. Welcome to Bible Read Along. My name is Daniel, and uh, here at Bible Read Along, we take one chapter, one book at a time, and read through it. We try to understand the context, how it applies, and today we are looking at Judges chapter 13. So grab a Bible, grab a pen, grab a highlighter, read along with us. It is Friday. Happy Friday. We are located in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. Um, and I'm here with my wife, Ashley. I'm going to fall asleep. And she's going to fall asleep, but that's okay. Sometimes there's no better place to fall asleep than listening to the Word of God, but... Um, well, maybe, maybe there's better places to fall asleep. Um, so yeah, let's get ready to get going here. Oh, Emmett's coming to join us for the Bible. <laughs> so let's get ready. Welcome. We welcome your comments. Um, I am not sharing this out. I shared it to my personal page and I am asking you to share it out to yours. If you're in Bible groups, um, devotion groups, Christian groups, share it out. And the worst that happens is they don't let you share it. So try it and see if they'll let you share. And you never know who might connect, but I I just don't, I can't keep up with Facebook. I don't know what's happening. So um, we'll figure it out. You will figure it out. But um, so we got lots on the go. If you haven't checked out BibleReadalong.com, go check it out. BibleReadalong.com. BibleReadalong.com. Um, I finished my prayer book. It is a book that teaches you, walks you through how to pray. So I have submitted it for publication. We will let you know that should be within the next, next week here that that gets approved for publication. And then I will be launching a prayer course, <coughs> which will probably be in about a month from now, probably April. And we will be doing that live online on Zoom and in person with a real audience. And our very first course here on prayer is going to be free. We just want you to come be a part of it. And uh, you will have to buy the book, which is the, the prayer book that I've worked on. Um, that's $10 Canadian, $8 American. So it's not going to break the bank. You buy it right through Amazon. They'll send it right to you within a day or two. Um, if you have prime, if you don't, it's going to take three to five days. So just be prepared. We'll get, we'll have some books for in-person people as well, but I'm really excited. I think this is a, a really exciting thing. And if you've been waiting for our prayer course, or if you know people that would like to learn to increase their prayer and actually how to pray, I find sometimes as Christians, we, you know, read your Bible, pray every day and you'll grow, grow grow and we talk about these things and people come to pastors leaders and go what do i do and go oh just read your bible oh just pray have you prayed about it and the reality is those are that's great advice by the way the problem with it is most people just don't know how to pray and so this book actually walks you through 16 minutes a day for four weeks and in that 16 minutes a day, it guides you. It shows you what to pray. It shows you what to write and you set your timer and it's going to, it's, I'm just really excited. I don't want to give it all away, but it's really cool. And it will increase your personal prayer life. And if you want to pray publicly in front of others, it will help increase that as well. So be, be on the watch and a great way to sign up is BibleReadalong.com. Just go and sign up on our contact form because we'll be sending out an email here to all of our subscribers and um, our email list in the next short while. All right. I think that's it. It's Friday. Let's pray and get into the word. Samson. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today, a new day. Thank you for your life and your word. We ask that you bring today's scripture alive in us. Change our hearts, transform our minds, and let us become Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled Christians in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. And actually, before we go to the scripture, let's go look at some of our friends in chat. We always welcome your chat. We want to hear from you. Um, we love we love it. And so even if it's just a quick hi, even if it's a I'm new, please jump in the chat and let us know that you are here. I saw we got a few people. Tessa, good morning. Morning, Matthew Baker. And Tessa says she's got a testimony. God delivered me from 25 years of meth use four years ago. Congratulations on your sobriety. Congratulations on your recovery. Those are big steps. And today's a big day because you get to take your exam for pure recovery coaching. And we just pray it is going well. We've been praying for you all week, Tessa. And we pray that that goes well. And that that Monday, or as soon as we hear from you, um, that we hear a testimony and that you are ready for the next chapter of your life. Morning, Valentina. Ashley's in the chat as well, although she's sleeping. So don't don't expect her to reply if you're commenting. No, it's not it's not a problem. I feel so good. No, I'm sorry to hear that. Matthew Baker's here. Kelowna, Ashley Bellamy, T. L. Florent. I joined their prayer group last night. Uh, it was great to watch and see what was going on there. And uh, if you're looking for a, a prayer group, check it out. We are hoping after the prayer course and things too that we are doing, we are hoping to um, open up a prayer night probably once, maybe once a week, for sure once a month where we can actually gather and be on Zoom. And we would love to see as many as possible join us on Zoom and we will take turns and we'll pray and we'll go through the requests and things like that. So lots of great stuff coming down the road. Be ready for it. Let's get to the scripture. If you're ready, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that heart. Flood the chat and tell me that you are ready. Let's go. Judges 13. Judges 13. All right. The birth of Samson. Thank you, Ashley. I see those hearts. See those thumbs up. Thank you very much. Um, the birth of Samson. So, first little bit of biblical context here. There is no P in Samson. A lot of people, when you're hearing it, talk Samson, Samp, Samson. There is no P. It's Samson. Um, ah, tea break. Okay, it is Samson. So, let's do this. Samson. We're in the book of Judges. Jonathan's here this morning. So glad to see you, Jonathan. The birth of Samson. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. I was thinking about this even actually this week and last night a little bit as I couldn't sleep. But um, we've talked about the cycle of Israel. They get comfortable. They fall into sin. Sin enslaves them, or the Amorites, Canaanites, you know, Midianites, all of these, they enslave them. Then they need a savior. Then they get comfortable. And I thought that is a that is a picture of our Christian life, and we've been talking about that this entire book. Um, it is also, I thought, you know, what if the, the problem with the savior there was their savior died? So, you know, their judges died. They passed away, and then they would come back to sin and da, da, da. our savior our judge is alive his name is jesus and so we don't need to to actually even follow the cycle what we need to do is resurrender our life to jesus to his lordship and say i'm saved you've saved me god your cross has paid the price but i am not living a christ like spirit filled life and so, God, I realign, I lay down my preferences, I lay down my opinions, I lay down, I make you Lord of my life again. So anyways, that's that's what I was thinking about that cycle. Let's get going here. Again, Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. Ooh. A certain man of Zorah named Manoah from the clan of Danites 
had a wife who was childless, unable to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now see to it, some rules here, now see to it that you do not drink wine or other fermented drink, that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb and he will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. <coughs> a Nazarite. Now this is not just talking about the location he may be born. This is actually talking about, or the tribe or whatever. Um, this is actually about a Nazarite vow, which was a vow before the Lord that you would you would remain clean. You wouldn't touch unclean things. You wouldn't touch alcohol. Your hair would, <laughs> you wouldn't cut your hair. And there was some other stipulations with that as well. There's only, <laughs> sorry, there is only a few people in the Bible that actually had Nazarite vows. Bible trivia quiz. Who, who do you think in the Bible had a Nazarite vow? <laughs> Let's uh, put it in the chat. Put Nazarite or N and then dash and the name that you think it might be. N and the name, dash the name you, you think it might be. There's only a few of them in the Bible. I'm going to take my puffer. Sorry. Okay, I think we're ready. There's only a few, so fill it out, and I will look it up after the list of those that have taken Nazarite vows in the Bible. There's a few I know, but I, might, I don't want to miss any. So put your name. Who do you think? Then the woman went to her husband and told him. So the angel appears, says, you're going to be pregnant. He's going to be a Nazarite. The woman went to her husband and told him, a man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God. Very awesome. Very awesome. Obviously, that, that word has a little different meaning today. Surfer kind of language. You know, awesome. Very awesome. Um, I didn't ask him where he come from, and he didn't tell me his name. But he said to me, you will become pregnant. You will have a son. Now then, drink no wine, other fermented drink. Do not eat anything unclean because the boy will be a Nazarite of God from the womb until the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I beg you to let the man of God you sent to us come again to teach us how to bring up the boy who is to be born. What a great prayer here. And it might seem weird at first, but let's put this into a little bit of context. Angel appears, says, you're going to have a son. He'll be a Nazarite. The first prayer they say is, God, teach us how to do this. So often in our lives, God will give us a passion, a desire, a thought, a dream, a vision, whatever it may be. And there's something stirred up inside of us that we know is from God. And then we try and do it in our own way, in our own timing. Instead of going, wow, God, very awesome. You gave me a vision. How do I do it your way? Teach me how to do what you have called me to do. Powerful, powerful prayer here. God heard Manoah and the angel of God came again to the woman while she was out in the field, but her husband Manoah was not with her. The woman hurried to tell her husband, he's here. He's here, the man who appeared to me the other day. Manoah got up and followed his wife. And when he came to the man, he said, Are you the man who talked to my wife? I am, he said. So Manoah asked him, When your words are fulfilled, when your words are fulfilled, we believe this is going to happen. 
What is to be the rule that governs the boy's life and work? How do we guide this? How do we, what structure, systems, rules do we need to put in place to make this work? We know what God says comes true. We want to fulfill our part and do what God has called us to do. How do we do it? I actually really like that guy. Manoah, that's, that's some good praying right there. The angel of the Lord answered, your wife must do all that I have told her. She must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, nor drink any wine or fermented drink, nor eat anything unclean. She must do everything I have commanded her. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, We would like you to stay until we prepare a young goat for you. The angel of the Lord replied, Even though you detain me, I will not eat any of your food, but if you prepare a burnt offering, offer it to the Lord. Manoah did not realize that it was an angel of the Lord. He just thought this was a man of God. Then Manoah inquired of the angel and of the Lord, sorry, he inquired of the angel of the Lord, what is your name so that we may honor you when your word comes true? He replied, why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Dun, dun, dun. What did we just learn about angels? Even though we have heard some, you know, um, Gabriel, Michael, all of these things, there are angels that have names that in our humanness we could never understand. Now there's a little A here. There would be a note probably in your written Bibles as well so that at the bottom of the page you can go and find out what is being said in other translations or whatever. It's too wonderful to understand, is what mine says. Does yours say something different? Then Manoah took a young goat together with the grain offering and sacrificed it on the rock to the Lord. And the Lord did an amazing thing while Manoah and his wife watched. As the flame blazed up from the altar toward heaven, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. What just happened? They get it, you know, man of God, messenger, tell us your name. No. Well, we want to give you a sacrifice. No, make your sacrifice to God. Well, I'll stay though. And I won't eat, but I'll stay. Okay. So they make, they make it. Oh, sorry. They make the offering. They set flame to it. While the flame is rising up, so does this angel. He just suddenly lifts up like Jesus did after his resurrection. And they see him just rise up like a helium balloon. Let go and he just started floating off the earth. And then he's gone. Then he's gone. As the flame brazed from the altar toward heaven, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. Seeing this, Manoah and his wife, now they realize this isn't just a man of God. This definitely is an angel. They fell with their faces to the ground. When the angel of the Lord did not show himself again to Manoah and his wife, Manoah realized that this was the angel of the Lord. <coughs> we are doomed. We're going to die, he said to his wife. We have seen God. You see, at this time... They still would have known, even though it's been hundreds of years, they would have known the stories of Moses, Joshua. No one had seen God. And so even Moses, when he went up the mountain with the, the presence, the being of God himself, he came back and he was shining white because it had changed him. Anyone who even touched the mountain would die. So instantly, there is a, a fear in Israel that says, if we see God, we die. So now they go, we've seen God. We're doomed. He promised good things, but we are doomed. But his wife, the more rational one answered, if the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering from our hands, nor shown us all of these things, or now told us this. So she kind of goes, well, hold on. Don't let your emotions dictate your actions. 
let's think this through. <laughs> Did this angel really want to kill us? No, or we'd probably be dead. He accepted our offering. We gave him a gift. He accepted it. Why would he accept our gift? Like offerings are, if they're accepted unto the Lord, it shows favor. So we, he can't be showing favor and want to kill us at the same time. And, you know, why would he teach us and train us how to do this if he's just going to kill us at the end? That's what she's saying. The woman, the woman, Samson's wife, the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew and the Lord blessed him and the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Mahana, Ma, Mahenu, Mahene, a, E, H in Canada is A, so like, I'm Canadian, A, eh? Mahane, <laughs> uh, Mahana Dan, between Zora and Eshtwal. So there it is, Samson is born. So let's talk about this a little bit. What stood out to you? I, there's a few things for me that I like. I like Manoah's prayer of, of um, you know, God, teach us. We believe that this is going to happen teach us how to do it. You gave us a vision, a dream, a purpose, a goal. Teach us how to do it. Um, I like the faith of Manoah and his wife that they, they, uh, they seek the Lord. Can we offer you a burnt offering? What's your name? They want to know this. So, um, and I don't think it ever mentioned Manoah's wife's name. Just double checking here. No. Um, you know, so they, they want a relationship. They want to do it right. I love that. Um, I love that Manoah's wife, when Manoah starts to get emotional, irrational, sometimes with dreams, you know, it becomes, you go, wow, this is great. God, teach me how to do. And then you go, how am I ever going to do this? Even though God is walking with you and promised him, we still go, God, how do we do this? What do I do? I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. This is, and she brings some, some, encouragement and says, no, 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 we can do this. Just go a step at a time. There's some recovery principles. Also a recovery principle. Who do you surround yourself with? Manoah and his wife were good for each other. They encouraged each other. She got a word from the Lord and she said, I don't want to do this alone. Husband, come, come hear the word of the Lord. I want to, I want you to meet this and they did it together. When he's having a mental breakdown, she goes, no, let's be strong. Let's be courageous. Let's just keep doing this a step at a time. That's some things I take out of this chapter. But what about you? What do you see in this chapter? Um, and then let's talk about a Nazarite vow. So what is a Nazarite vow? And then let's look up a list of who they are. So what did you get though? What did you get out of this chapter? Please let me know. I'm going to go to Wikipedia, which is not always the greatest resource, but we're going to go take a look. Let's see what we can see what we can see here. What did you get? We want to know in the comments. A Nazarite vow, Wikipedia. In the Hebrew Bible, a Nazarite or a Nazarite vow is one who voluntarily took a vow, which is described in numbers. So that's the first one. Nazarite comes from the Hebrew word Nazir, meaning consecrated or separated, set apart. So Nazarite actually means Nazir, which means consecrated, set apart, made holy. So that's kind of a cool, so even when you say, I have a Nazarite vow, or they're going to be a Nazarite, it means the angel is literally saying, you're going to be set apart and made holy for a divine purpose. So here's kind of the... The, the rules of an ab, of a Nazarite vow. Abstain from all wine, anything else made from grapes, such as cream of tartar, grapeseed oil, traditional rabbinic authorities, rabbinic, that's like rabbini, rabbi, rabbi, uh, teacher, Hebrew teachers. Um, all other types of alcohol were permitted. That's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of changed because originally a Nazarite vow was not. So this is where Wikipedia is not always accurate. Wikipedia is, for those that don't know, it's not an encyclopedia. It's people 
like myself or others that have some knowledge and understanding. So they write it up. It gets approved. Nobody really checks these things. So you could put stuff in here that doesn't even make sense. Um, it would have been all alcohol. That's what the angel just said. Don't consume any alcohol. But as it went on later in times, the rabbis went, oh, it's okay to have, you're not allowed wine, but you can have this alcohol. See, that's the religious, anyways. Um, refrain from cutting your hair on your head, um, but allow the locks on the head to grow. Do not become ritually impure by contacting something dead or graves, corpses or graves. Um, then you have to offer certain things or certain things you have to do. I want to see if there's a list of Nazarites in history. Let's let's see if this will go to the Bible. Samson. Two examples of Nazarite in the Hebrew Bible are Samson and Samuel was also a Nazarite. So we got Samson. We got Samuel. I'm going to just see if I can find a better list here. Is this new? Had you ever heard of a Nazarite in the Bible before? Now we've heard Jesus from Nazareth. But let's see, is he a Nazarite? Let's find out. Um, and I'm trying, sorry, I'm trying to watch comments and stuff here too, but I want to look this up. List of Nazarites in the Bible. Let's see if this will do it. So it's saying Samson and Samuel as well. There's got to be more than that. Because I believe... I believe um, John the... Ba yeah, okay, here's a better list. KingJamesBibleDictionary.com Could not load. Okay. So they also include... So Samson, Samuel, John the Baptist never cut his hair, didn't drink wine, didn't touch unclear dead things, animals or people. Now, Jesus, let's talk about Jesus. Um, was Jesus a Nazarite? No. Now, why do we know that? Because the Bible says he hung out with those that were drinking wine. We assume he also drank wine. I'm not going to get into that today, but he drank grape, whatever, from the grape plant. He had products from that. Um, Jesus also touched dead things. And, you know, he would touch the dead people, bring them back to life. He, so there, is, there are some things there, but Sam, Jesus is actually not considered a Nazarite um, based on all the traditions of this vow. But Samson, Samuel, and John the Baptist absolutely are and i don't know if there's more because it won't let me look it up let's go to the chat find out what you guys are saying here kind of a cool chapter starting uh starting samson's life we're ready we're ready we're ready Ashley might not be able to watch the whole thing. She's got to drop Luna off at the vet. Okay. Praying that the surgery goes smooth and well for your your for Luna today in Jesus' name. Ashley guessed Jesus. Oh, she also guessed John the Baptist. Good job, Ashley. John the Baptist. Pardon? Yeah, John the Baptist for sure. Jesus is questionable. Uh, what was the angel of God's name? Well, we read, we don't know Matthew because it was so, it was so wonderful or amazing that we couldn't see what it was. Um, next we see Jonathan guest, John the Baptist, Peter. Nope. Peter again, he was a fisherman hung out. He drank wine, um, probably cut his hair. You know, he did not fit the full mold. Manoah was a good man in the Bible and he prayed good prayers. What does it mean to be a Nazarite? Great question, Jonathan. I hope I've answered that now. Um, if you have more questions about it too, we can look it up some more, but that was just a quick look up. The main things are nothing grape products, no wine, no alcohol, 
you're not allowed to cut your hair and you have to keep yourself clean by not touching dead things. That's the main things. All right. And then Jonathan's praying for my lungs. I, amen. I need it. Lord, bring healing. I believe, God, you've called me to preach and teach and to lead others. And so, Lord, I just speak to these lungs in Jesus' name. Healing, openness. I stand with Jonathan in agreement that by your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. Amen. That's it for today, guys. That's the beginning of Samson. Again, if you enjoyed this, hit share. If you want to follow our email, I haven't sent any yet. By the way, if you're like, I joined the email list and I haven't got any. I haven't sent any yet. I'm still just getting it set up. Um, but we will have an email going out with monthly news and, and updates and things like that. Um, probably even going to get to the point where it's weekly, especially as we're releasing more courses, products, that kind of stuff too. Um, and if you're interested in that prayer course, I'm really excited. It's going to be a great course. And so we are looking for people to join us. We'll have to book a time in a room. Probably we'll do this at our church and we will have people in person for this. It's probably going to be a two to three hour training on prayer. So we will do in person and then we will also do on Zoom. And then when it's all done, we're going to package it together. I'll do some editing and get it ready. And we will actually have this available for people to purchase, to learn how to pray and to grow, <laughs> grow, <coughs> grow. <laughs> I hate it. Grow in their prayer time personally and in front of others. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you again for being here. We will be back on Monday. We will be back on Monday, and we so appreciate you guys being here, taking the time to be a part of Bible Read Along and this family. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>